Hello and welcome to another episode of TPK, the show so named so that if I do accidentally kill all of my players, I can just call it branding. You yes, welcome to <laughs> the players keep. Fight me, I dare you. Speaking of those players, let me introduce you to them now. On my left, we have Callum Sim, Woo! Charlotte Cummings, Woo! Demi Gray, Woo! Ben Fenner, Woo! and Kendall Boardman. Yeah. I am the one and only Jack Fletcher, and I will be your humble dungeon master for the foreseeable future. As per usual, no Pete, he's swimming. Send him love. We miss you. Don't drown, he's, Pete. He's just traveling. He's, he's on his way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very long way. He's not a road in real life. No, he's not. He's at half speed. Well, with that being said, I don't think we've got anything else to talk about. So let us not keep the players waiting. Let us not keep you waiting. It is time to enter the, the Players, players Key. In the last chapter of our story, the mercenary group, now known as the Dawn Takers, Dawn! <laughs> signed a contract with Malagdus Gran, the leader of the Vanal Hills Mining Company, to exterminate a new Ankeg infestation within the labyrinthine corridors of his mines under the promise of 5,000 gold pieces upon delivery of sufficient evidence that you have succeeded. With this contract now signed, you were left to attend to your own devices for the rest of the day and you split up into three separate groups. Antonia mm -hmm. went round the city <laughs> And visited the temple of Neliguir. Mm. They met the high cleric, a lepidoptolid, who very graciously welcomed you into her temple, granted you free access to one of the prayer chambers, as you were a fellow cleric of one of the Moon Watcher gods. And you took some time to meditate in there, focus your thoughts, determine what your next steps were before exiting. Whilst this was going on, Nakani, Sigismund, and Willow mm. headed off to <laughs> the, <laughs> we uh, to the Iron Barracks, where they tried to gain an audience with Inquisitor Hellis. <laughs> Through some fantastic deception, they learned that Inquisitor Hellis is now no longer in within the ranks of the Iron Guard, they have been banished to the Everfrost Expanse. The massive, harsh, uh, frost creep climate to the north of the continent. And I'll have to raise little Felis all on my own. <laughs> Felis! Felis! <laughs> Felis Hellis. Felis Hellis. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that poor <laughs> child is going to get bullied. The middle name's going to be Ellis. <laughs> Felis Ellis Ellis. <laughs> Terrible. They then visited the uh, tinctures and trinkets shop that Antonia um, visited just a little while before and managed to gather a modicum of information on the goings-on within the city. They asked about suspected drugs and their effects on people and other tinctures that they believe to have been used on Lady Ologiana. Unfortunately, the GIF was not able to supply you all of the information they needed, but you do still feel more educated than when you left. Whilst this was going on, Mothew was headed over to Arcanist Oknunut of Fuixkas. And that is where we pick up now. Mothew, you have just left your companions at the Stewpot Tavern, and you have made your way back over to the Arcanist's house for your evening of research. Mm. 
there's a couple of prolonged moments of silence before once again you are greeted with the hulking form of the white-haired minotaur who ah. looks you up and down and goes, hmm. I give him the return. <laughs> <laughs> Come on then. You're going to be best buddy. <laughs> and he immediately uh, gestures for you to follow. I do so. You once again enter the abode of Arcanist of Fuixka, and you are once again led up to the same study area that you were originally shown to. Once again, Arcanist Oknunut of Fuixka is in this study. The desk, however, has been moved to the side to create a little bit more room. Other than that, not too much has been rearranged about this room, but they have rearrange the room ever so slightly they look around at you as the minotaur knocks on the door announcing their entrance and they smile warmly warmly at you ah my friend um moth you if i am not mistaken correct arcanist it is very good to see you again my friend and once again i thank you for your cooperation in my studies um Thank you. You may leave us for now, he says to the Minotaur, and they <clears throat> and simply turn and head out the door, closing the door behind them. Moffy kind of looks around after he sees the Minotaur leave. Should I, um, I should have put down my weapon. You can put it over there, and gestures to the desk. Plunks it down with a thunk, um, and a little bit of ash pours out of the sensor's holes. Mm -hmm. Right. Where do we begin? Well, that is the question, isn't it? Uh, this is a little new to me. And so I will be taking my time to study this carefully. Mm. For the moment, if you would, I would simply like you to tell me about your talents when you first noticed that you had these abilities what circumstances you were in when these abilities came to fruition how long you have been training them Th things like that does that sound like something that you can yes I could elaborate on <clears throat> elaborate as you say Perfect, perfect. They sit down at the desk to the side and get out a stack of fresh par parchment, a large ink quill. They take out a brand new quill and with a small uh, quill knife, they sharpen it up, dip it into the ink and look at you and just nod. Would you mind if I expand upon the capabilities of Blood Echoes for the purposes of roleplay? Uh, by all... By all means, let's see what you come up with and we'll see what we can do. What would you like to achieve? Fireball! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I resurrect everyone who's died. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to try and achieve? To effectively, for the moment, use blood echoes as it pours out of him mm. to create scenes, little... Um, Interesting. Almost, uh, what's the word? The Tableaus. Tableaus. Mm. You were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Don't speak to me. <laughs> um, yes. I you loved like it. it, Charlotte. Don't worry, Kendall's going to try and Okay, in me. this instance, make me an arcana check. Ooh. If you would prefer... Uh, sorry, make me a spell casting check. So spell casting modifier and proficiency to try and warp the intended use of a spell you already know to do something else. Nice. I have a one. That's really <laughs> mean. <laughs> Um, what, what what dice do I want to roll? No, <laughs> the fear. Um, stop saying one to me. No, I will roll the big one. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, children. Oh, oh, that was so close to a one. That's a 22. Hey. 22. Oh, you a one. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, roll me 2d6, please. In fact, no. Roll me 2d10. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Uh, may I have another D10, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. <laughs> that's fair. Stop it. Ooh, that's two sevens. For 14. 
your maximum hit points is reduced by 14. <gasps> Whoa! I was, Why? I was trying to help. <laughs> reduced. Reduced. Why? The strain of trying to extend your blood magic far beyond its usual parameters takes a specific toll on your form. However, you are successful in warping the arcanic effect of this particular spell. Brilliant. <laughs> so you now have the capabilities to, as you say, create tableaus or vignettes, if one were to look for another word. Um... <laughs> <laughs> one won't. One won't. That's quite fun. That's quite all right. Um... <laughs> anyway, I but you now have that capability to do so. Right, brilliant. Um, I just need to find a quick name. It's the name we discussed mm -hmm. about the, the Jonathan. thing. You, you have so many things. <laughs> you might have to be slightly more specific. The Who's one with the picture that I sent you. Ha ha, yeah. Ha ha. Ha ha, ha ha, yeah. Ha -ha. Um, where Jack, is you your... Quick! Cover me. <laughs> uh, where did you back. send me this? It was on uh, Messenger, wasn't it? It was indeed. Oh, was. As we both research Mothu's... <laughs> both Mothu <laughs> and Ochnanot <laughs> open books. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a time ago. <laughs> That's a good news you got there. It's a good story, Graham. Um... How far back did you send this to me? I'm finding it, don't you worry. You about are you on it? Okay. You go to media and files, you can just look at all the photos that they've sent you, as opposed to going through your messages. It's not... How, can I do that on my laptop? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's Grandpa Jack. Grandpa Jack. Grandpa Jack. Grandpa, Grandpa Jack. Grandpa Jack. I'll have you know I'm particularly technologically advanced. Thank you very much. He's like, I can open my Young yes, whippersnappers. Story, Grandpa. I can do the TikToks. <laughs> For the viewers at home, Jack's finest hour is whenever he's playing an old man. It's <laughs> <laughs> just really Truly. Funny. This is just a facade. I'm 96 on the inside. Uh -huh. <laughs> have you found the particular detail that you want, my dear? I haven't, but I'll just I'll create okay. something. Okay. We'll we'll crack on for now and we will say insert name until you find it. Thank you. Insert name here. Insert name here. Right. Um Matthew deliberates for a moment as for the first time in Perhaps a long time. He actively thinks back beyond the past few years. Mm -hmm. He. Uh, what's the. Is there anything in the middle of the room? Or is often enough. No, he has cleared the center of the room. Everything is off to the side. Again, this is sparsely decorated, this particular room, but what is here, you can tell, is fairly expensive. Would you mind if I. Uh motions towards the sensor. It'll be easier for me to show you. Whatever you need, by all means. Uh, Matthew goes over to the, the dresser, mm -hmm. picks up the sensor and places it. Um, strangely, it seems to be able to stand on its end mm -hmm. with the point and the, the, um, the chamber at the top. Rips out a little bit of fur um, and strikes his, the palm of his hand against the top of the sensor, rubbing it together until it creates a motted metal ball. Mm -hmm. Mottled ball. There we go. Places it inside, reaches in, grabs a few herbs, and takes off, again, another scrap. Mm -hmm. Scrawls some runes down in the blood, and pops it inside the sensor. As you do this, you can see that um, Arcanist Ophuixka's eyes are on you completely, but their hand is just... Just writing notes consistently on everything that you do. He closes the sensor and looks at the arcanist. Don't be alarmed. It won't hurt you. Strikes his um, strikes something in his palm against the side of his armor. Mm -hmm. As you see something spark, a little <clears throat> of embers pokes up as he slips it into the sensor. All of a sudden, <clears throat> it burns up purple red smoke starts to billow into the room. Perhaps a bit too much for the amount of material in there. 
He starts to get an almost sweet smell before it turns metallic, like the taste of blood in your mouth. And he holds out his arms, and blood, more than he's struck from his hand, starts to drip down and then systematically work its way back up his arms. And from everywhere it traced like veins, smoke starts to billow out. And quickly, that red, black lightning starts <coughs> like thunder off in the distance. And as it billows out, it moves towards the sensor and piles in, condensing and condensing and condensing for, after a moment, it pillows out the top like a volcano eruption and down the sides of the room as they find themselves in almost a dark, otherworldly space. Little blasts of lightning here and there starting to illuminate with red before there's eventually a red hue in the room. And as Ochnanov looks towards Mothyu, he sees, he sees the silhouette of him start to darken and darken and darken before it's just two glinting eyes and the silhouette of his buggy outline mm -hmm. before it disappears into the dark and he hears his voice in his room. To tell you the truth, I'm not quite sure where it all began. I don't know my birth nor my heritage. All I do know is that the man that saved me, found me, was the same man that raised me. I was found as a cocoon, pupa, if you will, as lepidoptilids often grow from. From what I know next, I know from only his words, not my own experiences. My tutor, he belabors the point for a moment, father, if you will, was a man named Beaufort. He runs a blighter group, mercenary group, called the Argensan. Colloquially, it means something along the lines of silver in the blood. They are monster hunters in the Blightlands. It just so happens that Beaufort's group specialised in hunting the undead, vampires, if you will. One day, in the Blightlands, Beaufort tells me that he found me in a wooded glen, a small pupa. He picked me up and slung me around his back, kept me for gods only know how long, and it was on a mission, hunting a great beast, hungry for blood, a four-legged bat, larger than the size of this room, hulking form, wings stretched back as far as a dragon's. If you'll allow me some. If you'll allow me a little hyperbole for stories and fairness. It was during this fight to bring this beast down that I believe it struck me. The pupa, that is. I can't posit as to what might have happened, but it was during that battle, after I was struck from his back, that I crawled from my pupa and was born into this world. From then, it was only a matter of years before I began to join the group, first as a scout, and then slowly trained in the way of the Blighter, hunting monsters. It was in the moment of my direst need that the powers began to manifest. Beaufort himself and the other Blighters were shocked, surprised, but they never made it clear as to where they believed my powers came from. But if anyone were to know more, it would be him. 
As such, they grew. And Beaufort nurtured them. Day by day, mission by mission. Encouraged me to explore them. Learn more about myself. It seemed that the more I poured into it, the more of my life force I threw into my spells as my power, the stronger it became. But in turn, the more vulnerable I would become. As he's telling it, you see images, figures, as the lightning flashes, the scenes change, and you see these, uh, what's the word again, tableaus of a man finding a pupa somewhere in the forest. It strikes again. Soon it's a man with others in the distance, in the background, and a small insectoid next to him. It flashes again. The two of them are out, but this time both holding swords, clubs, shields. And as Matthew grows and grows and grows, you see him fighting different monsters from a bright line. Sometimes some of the other figures disappear. You notice steadily as time goes on, fewer and fewer of them are there. I've never come across anything like this book before. No symbols, nothing to enlighten me as to where this power might originate. But I would wager, as it flashes again, back to this time, the Blight Lines, where we went in, and near where we found the book. If there were to be an answer. Does Matthew know how the Blight Lands, the story of how the Blight Lands began? Matthew would definitely know how... De- Matthew would know the various stories of how the Blightlands began. Some theorise that the corrupted blood of the fallen gods uh, spattered across the face of Ilthansia and seeped into the very earth itself, corrupting them. Some suggest that the Blightlands are nexus points. You would know that nexus points are points at which different planes touch and there is a transference of energy. Some suggest that the Blight lands on Nexus points to particularly corrupted planes of existence. There are other theories that it is um, sort of like a background arcanic radiation from the first cataclysm when the fallen gods rose up against the um, major pantheon and the rest of their allies. Um, so it is a nebulous topic. No one knows exactly. No. With all things regarding to the first cataclysm and the gods themselves, there are a couple of stories that are pretty well known and well accepted, but there are some differing theories as well. The Blightland's definitely one of them. If it's true that there is this desanguina, god of blood, a goddess of blood, I believe it may have something, some connection to the history, perhaps the conception of the Blightlands themselves. As the lightning flashes again, he's standing directly next to Ochnanut by his side. You do see, just for a moment, Ochnanut start and very quickly gain compo- composure. It's only for a second, but they are slightly surprised at your sudden appearance, but then they can just continue writing. Um, and Matthew's going to say, You should probably see this as well, as he unclips, for once with a a swift um, ease, the pauldron from his from his armor, and as it falls off either way, you see for the first time just underneath the top of his plate armor is this white painted vampire bat skull, but with a monstrous, ferocious form. 
and as he rubs his hands over it, it mostly rubs out of his fur, and you see two claw marks strike down. And where they are, or where they, they were, there is now glossy white fur, almost scarred into his into his um, body. And as he shows that to Ochnanut, he looks round at him over, the sh- over his shoulder. I hope for your sake and mine that we can discover and unravel the mysteries of this complex puzzle. And that's where the light begins to come back into the room as the smoke travels back up the walls and with a back into the centre and with a final a vein like between the two of us during uh, one of the battles almost like a a suspended Mm -hmm. vein reaches out from the centre and back into Mothu's hand I'm not sure what that will do to help you but now you know most of the story my friend already you have given me far greater insight into your particular skill set this is fantastic we have much to discuss um he reaches into his pack quickly and he pulls out one of his books Mm -hmm. um compared to his other notes this one looks like a tome Mm -hmm. and you can see just like across his body there are different bits of writings and symbols um the book is covered in seals scraps things pasted to it and as he puts it down um he slides it across to the argent sang knowledge is power these are my studies every symbol i've come across in the blightlands every bit of information i've found that i thought might help me fight the monsters in there is recorded in this book there are some there that I've never discovered the meaning of. They could be mundane. They might not be. But I'll leave that to you, scholar. You have my gratitude. I will be as quick as I can with copying down your notes and inscriptions, and I shall return this to you, but as soon as I can. Places that off to one side, um, sort of at the edge of the desk that he is sat at. You can see that he's rifled through a couple of leaves of parchment, just scrawling notes and diagrams and all that sort of stuff. Um, this is fascinating. Fascinating work. Um, before I go any further, may I inspect the wound that is on your back? Of course. Um, and as he turns round, he settles down as, as maybe Ochno starts to look at him. He takes in a deep breath opens up his shoulder blades his thorax blades (laughs) (laughs) Um, and he says without looking at Ochnanut there is an ulterior motive for me allowing you to study me like this but of course you can confide in me Beaufort my uh, my teacher Mm hmm Sustained an injury much like mine. Recently. Semi-recently. The wound festers. Keeps him on the edge of death. I am looking for a cure. If you discover anything in your research, I would appreciate it if you share it with me. You feel uh, his hands disconnect from your torso for a moment. You hear that the scrape of quill on parchment. Uh, He puts it back down, goes back to inspecting you and says, that is one of the many things that we can potentially unravel for you, my friend. Should we get to it? Goes back to studying your back for a moment. After a couple of moments, he seems satisfied, sits down, Scroll some more notes. Turns a page. Muffy puts his... Yeah. To put his pulpit back on. Where to begin? Where to begin? Let me tell you what I know. You, my friend, are a rarity that I have not encountered in all of my travels in all of my years. 
I have heard of these sorts of abilities, not as refined as you have them now. But as I have said to you before, blood magic has a long and varied history. From what little we know about the gods, they instill this world with power. Arcania is the goddess of magic, and through her, everything is instilled, and he sort of looks absentmindedly out of the window that is off to his left, or where the study used to be. Everything is filled with some arcanic potential. Even seemingly mundane plants and creatures can be combined in very specific ways to make potions, elixirs, that allow material beings such as ourselves to enhance ourselves. I believe this is the same with blood. There is a reason why our life force has been used for cycles upon cycles for very specific magics. I believe from what you have told me and what very little I have started to learn from Desanguira's book that it is from her that all of our blood holds arcanic potential just as the insects outside and the water that runs down the mountain so on some level no matter how faint you are connected to the lacerated lady but I do not think that you draw your powers directly from her. You were never aware of the goddess beforehand. And thus, she is not bestowing gifts upon you. Something else is the source of your power. Potentially it happened when you were but a cocoon. Potentially it happened when you sustained this injury. Of that I am not sure. Yet. But. There is something innate in you. That grants you these gifts. Of that I am sure. But this is something that we can. Unravel together. Mm. It is a tantalizing mystery. I suppose you could call it that. Let us take a break from this historic recital for a moment. Would you mind showing me some of your magical abilities? This is already very impressive. Do you have any other talents? For blood magic? Yes. I do, but... Uh... It may take me some time to refocus. Them. That is absolutely fine. You take your time. I am ready whenever you feel you can display, and I will simply write notes. And he sits back and waits for you to start uh, casting incantations of some description. Nice. Um, I think while he's sitting there, Matthew sits back in the centre again for the first time I think you've ever seen him. Not just a uh, <laughs> that kind of violent calm that usually sits on him where he's on the edge of doing something. This is a, a stoic meditation, cross-legged, sat is censored by him, now just herbs. Again, mm -hmm. that sense of metal, that smell of metal is still floating through the air. It sits at the back of your throat and at the tip of your tongue. But he's still, like a cocoon. You can barely see his thorax moving at mm -hmm. all, if he has lungs. <laughs> he has... He has Oh, I, this is what I was oh going to say. Oh my god, extra brown. What kind of point. oxygen transfer have we got going on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um, you do have breathing Tubes. apparatus. Tubes. Tubes. <laughs> yes. An apalong. My A-level biology coming in. I love it. Yeah, man. I can't believe you remembered that. That's excellent. So. Inspiration. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to pull up the spells. For you. Yes, by so, all I mean, means. You will know them I no no no, that's quite all right. I've got them here as well. So if you want to, um, if you want to describe them to me, I can bring them up. I don't know specifically what spells you took. That's what I'm finding. <laughs> You're quite all right, darling. You're quite all right. Um, as he begins to talk again uh, about his history he goes back into describing almost like a story now mm-hmm. but in effect taking a leaf from Siggy's book mm-hmm. um, describing the different locations in the Blightlands yes. what the, the symbols are like where they were found this time it's methodical almost like um, medical uh, yeah. investigations where everything is dead to the point mm-hmm. it's bit by bit everything of use is broken down and it's odd for the first time for a man that can't remember his name mm-hmm. has every lucid detail exact to how it was as far as he mm-hmm. can put it to him as you are doing this Ocknanut takes the book that you gave to him opens it out and starts copying inscriptions occasionally he will ask you is this the symbol that you are talking about here yeah. fantastic okay and okay that was that was from sort of the middle of Belladrin, not over to the east, did you say? Yes. Oh, yeah. And he's going through the map and pointing out the locations of different parts of the Blightlands that mm. he's in, where they crossed through. I'm so sorry, I can't find. No, it. no, no. You're quite, all, you're quite all right. So, the f- um, would you like to come over here and double check the spells that I've got? Yeah, there was some that I added to uh, to my list, but you're I'll quite all right, Daddy. We can all. I've got a vague idea of which ones you took. You took some of the forensic yeah. spells. Um, and I believe you took transfusion as well, didn't you? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Yes, I think so. Yeah. So, yeah, he's going to, for the first thing, he's going to say, could you uh, call your um, my little friend back in? Oh, uh, yes, but of course, um, do you, is there something that you specifically require? It's something that will only manifest with another creature, but he will need something to chain him to the wall. Right, I, um, hmm. And he takes out his book and sees if he has something, uh, for that yes i might be able you need to render him immobile i would like it if he were not able to move towards one of us yes by all means um he gets up and goes to the door and yells down the hall van yik i require your assistance please and after but a moment, you hear the heavy footsteps. And this looming figure of Venyik, the Minotaur, suddenly fills the doorway. Venyik, if you could possibly stand over to the side for me, my friend has some tests for us to conduct. And Venyik, without hesitation, simply goes, hmm. stands over to the side. At this point, Ocknanut turns to you and says, Would you like me to restrain him now? First, let me show you the core of my power. Mm. Um, and he looks towards him. He looks towards Venik. 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 Um, he sits down and again strikes this time across his armor, just a little bit mm-hmm. deeper down. You can see it somewhere he's struck before. A little bit of blood, like the veins, just like before, spills out heads towards the ground and pulses like roots towards him, mm-hmm. finding him underneath and wrapping up his legs, scribbling around his torso and finally up to his neck mm-hmm. and around his mouth, in going inside of his, his, his mouth. For a moment, they seem connected. Okay. Venyek, you will have to forgive me for this as he pulls out a small 
throwing dagger. Mm-hmm. Throws it towards his foot just to strike him down yeah. at the bottom. And just as it hits, they boom, switch places. Incredible. Immediately, Van Yick is looking around like... Mm. And Ocknanut is stood there, very stoic, just studiously staring at the pair of you. That is fascinating. What, may I ask, was that effect that you put on him? I can... arcanically, magically, swear a blood oath. As long as I focus in my mind on someone I wish to keep connected to myself, I can move to them. I can switch places with them. I can feel them as if they were an extent. Fascinating. Truly fascinating. That is incredible. That is completely new to me. I have not heard of this sort of effect before. Is there anything else that you can do? Watch. Where this the uh, throwing knife struck his foot mm-hmm. is a small scratch. Yeah. Um, as Mothieu again strikes himself, but this time, instead of watching the blood flow out and down into the ground he crushes it in his hands moves over and rubs it across um, Vignette's foot Mm -hmm. for a moment it glows Mm -hmm. a white hot red and then fades as the wound itself seems to have healed that is a neat trick but a good one more thing and you're not going to like it at this point he looks to Ocknanut and Ocknanut sort of calms him slightly with a hand it is okay Venyik I am here no harm will come to you that we cannot undo at which point Venyik sort of (sighs) begrudgingly goes back and stands over to where he was before folds his arms get on with it now is the time to restrain him. All right, then. Venyik, if you could possibly acquiesce to my influence. And you see Ocknanet, um bring his hands through the air and thrusts them at Venyik. And there is a... <clears throat> and Venyik is just held in place. Um, as Mothy picks up the sensor and begins to swing it round gently, mm-hmm. I say gently, but with that kind of rhythmic, yeah, he swings it from side to side as he looks at Venyik and says, now "Don't worry, Venyik. If you do manage to break out of the Arcanist spell, I won't kill you, but I might maim you a little bit." <laughs> <laughs> there is no reaction on the face. <laughs> um, and as he looks at Venyik, he begins to mutter something under his breath and you see for the first time the reflection usually in Matthew's eyes is that of whatever ambient light is in the room but this time it darkens a little mm-hmm. little glints of red sparkle out and you see as Matthew opens his mouth he holds one hand out towards Venyik, and you see those little tendrils of veins of blood reach out almost like um probos- mm-hmm. almost like proboscis 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 multiple of them <laughs> what would be the plural is it just proboscis? i think it's proboscis. just proboscis yeah like multiple sh- proboscis right. like um they start to, to reach out flowing and, and uh, ebbing towards vignette as he holds up his arm he opens his mouth and you see just the sharp bits of chitin that have pointed up and down, um, like canines mm-hmm. in a way. And he looks at Ochnod and says, don't let him go. And as he bites down into his arm, mm-hmm. the blood begins to pour down his face mm-hmm. as his eyes go completely red. And you see Vignette's eyes also <laughs> blood red. And as he opens his, oh, I suppose, is so- his mouth open a little bit? He was closed-mouthed. 
just stood there and is now paralyzed. So I believe you're casting Bloodlust on him. I am. Fantastic stuff. Wee. Which is, if I remember correctly, I literally just had the... Wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's a wisdom save. You Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's caught. It's a natural one. Ooh. He yes, fails. And now... Going to make a uh. Ooh. What is... Oh, okay. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. You see Venyak's eyes fill with that blood red energy and then fade and then <sighs> takes the axe from behind his uh that's always um attached to his back and just charges up and wails at you as he um uh, breaks free of the hold person spell that was upon him. Can He's I ask for one bit of flavour? Go for it. Um, as he opens his mouth, can there just be blood pouring yes. down like an animal's mouth? Yes. You see that as he uh, yells, there's a bit of froth of just pure anger that is stained pink as this dark blood just drips from his jaw. Oh, he, not get control of him! He is going to take two attacks at you. The first one is... A... <laughs> that's a 19 to hit. Ooh. As he rifts up his yeah. sensor just in time. And then goes back and wails down a second time recklessly ah! at you. That's a 19 again. Oh, this time he bats it away like a parrot. Absolutely. Um, at this point, Okunanut is going to cast another spell on him. This is another wisdom save. Saves, unfortunately. No, shit! Um, Venyak is still bearing down on you. It is your turn. Um, Matthew is going to grab one of the smoke bundles from his yes. pack, shove it into the center and light it as he shouts, Okunanut, now! Fantastic. Um, let's see what Ocknanut's got. I shouldn't have used so many spell slots. <laughs> and taking Ooh, that shit. Um, Next time, create the villain on the first spell. <laughs> <laughs> Not the last. Uh, <laughs> let's bring that up. And you see Ocknanut, um thrust his hand out towards Venyik and there is a slight wisp of red energy that strikes Venyik in the chest and then spreads out and it looks like red frost. Ooh, he is going to make a con save which he succeeds again. You can see for a moment Venyik's um form sees up ever so slightly, but he roar, comes down again. Oh no, oh no. Uh, that's a 21 to hit. Oh, it hits. Hits. Why didn't I do this on the weak one? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, he oh, no. is going to deal. Oh no, can I go back in time? Oh, no, do you want a cat? 20, <laughs> 20 points of slashing <laughs> damage. <laughs> Wait, oh my god, your max HP was down, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was. It was. Thank God we decided for Nakani to wait outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Really glad you persuaded Thank god the cleric's around. Oh, is the smoke oh, up? The smoke is up. He has to do it at disadvantage. So that would have been a straight roll. I rolled at advantage because he's recklessly attacking. So I'm going to re-roll. That's a, that's a failure completely. Fucking In the yeah. smoke, he thinks he sees you. He brings this axe down and... Boom, strikes into the wood as you step aside. He, he goes, and on this one, you see a flash of red energy from his hands, and he, and there is just a re slight red flash on the tip of his axe. He is going to expend. Am I about to get <laughs> smited? Uh, uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> well, this is poetic justice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
You see that flash of energy in the veins ever so slightly pulsing his neck as he brings down his axe again at you. This is a straight roll. Oh, bloody hell. That is a natural one. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. Oh Whiffs oh into the side um, and strikes into a bookcase and <clears throat> tries to tear it away. Stepping to the side and this smoke is still billowing out of the center as he's moving, kind of almost like a dance. You hear, I suppose, if Ockenra can't quite see him properly and just sees the elbows and shoulders and legs and swings coming out of this smoke, you just hear a chuckle from in, from inside. <laughs> <laughs> You're in my world now, beast. Ooh. Ooh. Amazing. Ockenra looks down, uh, he looks up at Venyik and runs up and places a hand on their back. What... Uh, level did you cast Bloodlust at? Two. Got to cast it at two. Got to cast it at two. Um, I'm going to... Oh, wait, no. Hang on. Is... <laughs> just double Oh, did you think anger? No, it's actually just pure lust. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sexy minotaur now. He's a sexy minotaur. <laughs> cast, it at, <laughs> cast it at level two. He puts his hand on the back of Venyik, and there is a boom of cleansing white light, and Venyik all of a sudden Well, that's no fun. I thought it better to stop our experiment before things got out of hand. Yes, quite right. Um, Matthew looks at Venyik. My apologies. No, it's a meat trick. Not it, bad. Matthew, for the first time, acknowledging a fellow warrior. Mm -hmm. Didn't quite go the way you thought, did it? No. You're pretty tough to hit. I wouldn't like to be hit by you. <laughs> You're not stupid either. <clears throat> Do you need anything else from me? And um, Ocknanut looks to you. That's all for now. Gives Venyik a nod. He called me if you'll need me. And exits the room once again. Um, after Venyik turns and perhaps Ocknanut is watching him go, there's a slight like release of tension from Mothew oh, as he's like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was a close one. When he is driven... Venyik is a very powerful ally to have. This is why he accompanies me on my travels. You must be very safe. <laughs> I can take care of myself. Venyik takes care of anybody else for me. <laughs> <clears throat> he goes about uh, sketching lots more arcanic diagrams, quizzing you on the different effects that you can do. And the night draws on. You are here for hours going over spells, abilities, where they come from, what forces you feel are washing over you as you cast each individual one. Is there anything specific that Mothew does or does not display to Ocknanut in this time? Mm. Or do you go through your plethora of... Um, Abilities. Is there anything he doesn't display? No. I think for now, <laughs> everything is on the table for him. Okay. Okay. It gets dark, candles are lit, and you keep discussing with Ocknanut about your abilities. Sometimes you drift into the Blightlands and start discussing the creatures and the denizens that you have found there. If anything else displays these particular abilities, where you found these gigantic bat creatures, etc., etc., etc. And it gets to about 12, 1 in the morning before Ocknanut sort of wipes their hands up their muzzle and over their eyes, folds their ears back down, and rests their hands on their neck and goes, You have a lot of stamina, my friend. More so than I do. Show you the territory. Unfortunately, I do not think that I can 
persist in these particular studies for this evening. Do you mind if we call it here and we can perhaps reconvene tomorrow? Yes. Yes, Marvelous. I think that would be wise. It's Marvelous. been uh, an enjoyable night. Wonderful, I am glad you have enjoyed yourself. I, myself, personally have had a fantastic time. Very good. Well, until tomorrow then. Oh, no, no. He extends a hand to you. <laughs> um, Mofi takes a second to look at it before reaching out and shaking firmly. I hope this helps. I can already tell that this is going to be extremely useful to my work. And I hope that I can, at some point in the future, meet you and pay you back in kind with the queries that you have given me. Very good. <laughs> good night, Arcanist. Good night, Matthew. Until tomorrow. And tomorrow. As I wake up now, listen. Let's go. Uh, Matthew turns to the exit and takes one last look around the room before walking through, passing uh, Venyuk. Uh, Venyuk on the way out. Good night, Venyuk. See you later, Mothman. Rest up. Looks like we're on for tomorrow. Wonderful. I look forward to it. <laughs> no, I'll say that. As he leaves and goes out the door. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> brilliant. Ooh, goodness me. Oof. Are you heading straight back to the Stew Pot Tavern? Yes. Fantastic. Uh, and he's going to fly back. As and he flies back as well. On the outer perimeters, the guards are less inclined to stop you. And you try and meander around them so as not to catch too much notice. It's a low. A low fly through as, like, through the streets. Absolutely not a problem at all. And um, after not too much time, in fact, half the time that it took you to get here, you end up in the dead of night outside the stew pot tavern and you walk in to find your friends and we will find out what they have been up to for the remainder of their day after our break. We will be back in a couple of minutes oh. to oh. catch up with the rest of the Dawn Takers. Uh, see you in a couple of minutes.
and welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> You're just hell bent on it. <laughs> Who was that? Can't believe it. Someone's poking their head around. Um, and welcome back. So. He is hella bent. <laughs> oh, mm. <laughs> very good. Inspiration? Not nah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, with Matthew's escapades pretty much bookended for the evening, we will return to the rest of the Dawn Takers. Tony, ah. you have just stepped outside the doors of the Temple of Nelaguir. Oh, okay. Is there anything specific you would like to do? <gasps> Any Anywhere specific you would like to go? Okay, so. Firstly, she's going to super quickly before she leaves, mm -hmm. just have a look around the... The... Right wing where she was. Yes. And just see if there are any windows along... Mm -hmm. There are the some windows. That maybe go into the high clerics. Room. So you walk on all. Just casually. You walk on all the way down, um, and you sort of turn the corner, oh. and the sort of little walkway that forms the perimeter of this particular structure stops about halfway down its length, okay. as it were. You can. There are steps that sort of guide you back down to the pavement. And you can see that there is a window set in a little ways up. Openable? Uh, give me a perception check. Next. It's all right, though. 19. 19. Very nice. You, uh, it looks like these windows can open. The shutters are closed on the inside. Okay. <laughs> Openable. Shutters closed on inside. <laughs> okay. It's like a hey, hey, audit hey, inspection. Hey, hey. <laughs> Lovely. Just right. like... She's going to walk uh, her way back to the stew pot. Okay. Am I there before everyone else? Yes, definitely, because they have been to multiple places throughout the day. So you've got... Um, where did you guys go? You went to the barracks. You then went to tinctures and trinkets. You will have roughly about, say, an hour or two before cool. they get back. Okay, so she's going to walk up to whoever's behind the desk. Behind In the, the stew desk, pot tavern. <laughs> it's not a premier in. Still Casey. How the hell touch it? Casey is tending bar at the minute. Hi. Hello Hi. there. Um, I was just wondering if I could have a, a room for the night, please. Yes, I believe you've still already got a room. Yeah, I, sorry, I just want a, a little bit of space for my friends, just for tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm just checking its notes. Um, I don't want Dolomus. I want a very specific <laughs> part of Dolomus. No room at the end. You'll have to um, stay in the main door. Oh, uh, it'll just be five silver. Sure. Uh, I give him a gold, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna say. Just don't tell them that I did this. This is, you understand that I just need a, a bit of space. Absolutely. Is everything all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. I just, um, just I need a couple of hours just to rest away from people. It's fine. Thank you, though. Cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> take, take the money. <laughs> if, if, if. I'm fine. I just need a nap. Okay. Did Casey care this much? Oh, <laughs> nosy bastard. Is <laughs> Thank you. Puts the coin away, exchange a little bit of silver, and uh, pockets that for himself. It's been a very lucrative day for Casey. Um, <laughs> Let's go down the lash. <laughs> okay. Does he give me a key? He does give you a key. Thank you. I appreciate this. Absolutely. Uh, I've not seen you. Thank you. Should I walk upstairs? She walks upstairs. She's find her room. You find your room. She's gonna go inside. <laughs> you go inside, and much the same as your Whoa. previous room, there are two single the beds. <laughs> <laughs> she, she slowly walks. <laughs> Not twenty. Pushes against the door, looks Drugged. back, 
She sighs. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm liking this new Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> Windows open inside. <laughs> Nothing can be appalling as that particular piece of manuscript. <laughs> anyway, anyway, moving on. She goes inside. You much the same as all the other rooms that you've seen. Two single beds, two foot lockers um, at the base of them. Uh, a window that opens out onto the street behind. Cool. She locks the door behind her. Puts the key on the wall. On the wall. On on, on the side. <laughs> <laughs> well, brain. Nope. Uh, cool. The contrast. <laughs> I love it. It's what I'm here for. I love it. Okay, cool. She's going to sit on the floor mm-hmm. near the window. Mm-hmm. And she's going to lay out the alchemist's kit that she bought today. Yep. She's going to get out all of the ingredients, specifically the ingredients that mm-hmm. she needs, and she's going to get them all out and lay them out in front of her. Okay. She is then just going to close her eyes for a minute, take a deep breath, take a moment, and just say, right, I might need some help. Uh, she's going to cast guidance on herself. Mm-hmm. And she's going to Begin making what she's making. I would like you to make me an alchemist's check. What do I do with that? Roll a d20. Add your intelligence. What's happening? For this, you can add your proficiency. And as this is granted knowledge, you roll at advantage. Girl. Girl. So what am I adding? Sorry. Roll, roll, roll. roll. (laughs) Proficiency. D and D one hundred and one. Roll. Let's start with the roll, and we'll go. From that. <laughs> Proficiency and intelligence. And intelligence. You so can that do this. Be... Unless you can persuade me that it is something else. Do a I think check. it's wisdom, because. Pause. <laughs> because Come on. he has experience from brewing healers potions. That would also be wisdom, right? I'm pretty. Most alchemical brewing is intelligence. But if it's like a uh, herbalism stuff, I thought it was. You are using an alchemist's kit. Yeah. I would argue that wisdom is common sense. Because, because. <laughs> because of the wonderful things he does. Exactly. I will. Because <laughs> Haverin has my back. And he says, <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> and I'm going to say wisdom. make this with so intelligence, but at advantage. <laughs> You can do it. You should just now give me the option. It's, it's going to be two nat 20s. A valiant effort. Yeah, come on, bud. You Guidance as well. Plus... Guidance. I believe in you. Advantage. <laughs> you. you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Good? Is it good? Is it, is okay, not... okay, okay, okay. So... Do, do we want it to be good, though? Yeah. That's 19. Mm, that's good. It's good. A 19. <laughs> God. You better watch out. This is, this is, <laughs> we're watching Tony Hyman. Haha, <laughs> Tony <laughs> You take um, the small pestle and mortar that you've got in your alchemist kit and you place in the five measures of you seeds and you gently press them down until they start um, producing a little bit of oil. Yep. You um, extract this, place it to one side. You take it the two measures of poppy seeds. You grind those to a paste. You add back in the you seed oil. You start to heat this up gently on a low heat. You separate the oil, discard the seed husks. You take the um, clouded sulfur caterpillars. You cut those in half. You add those to the oil. Allow that to simmer again for another 30 minutes. (laughs) Simmer? (laughs) At the end of this process, you can see the bodies of them turn from this sort of like uh, yellowish color to a, uh, a light brown. And so you take them out. Uh, sorry, no, you don't. You add in the measure of the tachnid fly wings. You leave them until the caterpillars shrivel, at which point you remove those caterpillars. You add in the distilled alcohol. Yep. Clean water that you've had brought up to your room. Yes, I did that. You stir it all in. You allow it to rest for an hour. And then, final ingredient... You add that half measure of Chul's saliva. 
add that in. And at the moment, the mixture is a viscous, sort of yellowish brown. Yep. Poo. <laughs> You're not there. <laughs> You're at blood camp. You're, You're at blood camp. <laughs> and you add the saliva and once again reheat it, this time subjecting this mixture to a high heat. And then, very slowly... The mixture starts to turn clear. You immediately take it off of the heat. You allow it to cool. And you know that because this solution does not lose its clear consistency, yep. you have successfully made one measure of this particular brew. Ow. I like how Jack described it in case anyone wants to make it at home. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who are budding alchemists, we Recipes will be making us. a content video of Kendall actually making the potion with the caterpillars. caterpillars. <laughs> Recipes on our, con- on our socials. Yeah. Yeah. The chul saliva is going to be really hard to source, but we'll make it work. So, uh, Kendall, whose who's hair are you going to put in your apologies for me? <laughs> Lol. Uh... <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, cool. It's made. It is oh, made. Fuck. You have Alrighty. successfully made. Uh, cool. So she'll. How long did that take? That time. That you are about at the end of your two hours now. Two hours. Uh, so what time would it be like? Uh, it's early evening. The sky is starting to darken at this point. Lovely. Uh, cool. So she'll take it and just kind of look at it and just kind of just like, oh, like it looks like nothing, like that kind of vibe. Where she's like, oh, this is super weird. And and she'll put it in her bag <laughs> and pack away her stuff. Uh, she's gonna stand up and look out the window. Moons, maybe. You, 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 the hint of a half blue moon of Nelaguir mm-hmm. and an almost full fuchsia moon of Vantha. Mm-hmm. The orange and white moons are at this point in the evening imperceptible. Oh dang. All right. Well, just have a moment and look. Look at the moons. There you go. I'm just going to walk downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to? Just see if these guys are in there. Okay. Um, can one of Willow, Siggy, and Nakani roll me a d20? And can Tony roll me a d20? Go on, I'll do it. 12. Six. Six. They are not here yet. You get back at 12 o'clock. Jesus, fuck. Um, okay. Uh, we never arranged what we were doing, did we? we did I'll just sit in the here. bar downstairs. Wonderful. Um, yep. Thinking. <laughs> you sit in a relatively quiet corner of the tavern. Yep. It is filling up now. There are a fair number of bodies in here. And you just pick a corner where you will be relatively unnoticed and left alone. Do you order a drink at the bar? Yes. Casey brings you a mug of ale and um, takes some coin from you for that. Um, Thanks, man. Six copper pieces. And cool, sure. You drink your ale in silence. I do. About 15 to 20 minutes later, Willow, Siggy, and Nakani walk through the door. <laughs> so, you three, between your um, little endeavor to tinctures and trinkets is there anything else that you would have been doing i think 
<laughs> definitely on the walk home at least Siggy's fully got carried away and launched into a long story about how he once hunted a moose on the yes i'm wastes <laughs> oh yeah so he comes <laughs> barreling through the door so there i was shield in one hand axe in the other with this gigantic thing bearing down on me and it it wasn't stopping for anything i was watching my father bleed hey tony no, no, Hi. no, don't stop. Oh, okay, my father was. I'm sorry, I'm telling the story. So, my father was bleeding okay. a moose charge, so I managed uh, to dodge out the way and kill the moose. How are you? Where have you been? Um, that was a lot to. Uh, well, I mean, I thought hi, I had more. Right? Yeah, good. Sure, cool. Um, I just been, I went just to have a look around the temple. Oh, was it good? Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, good. What about you guys? Find anything? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Let's get a round of drinks in and we'll tell you all about it. Sure. Um, completely forgetting my accent. Uh-huh. Where is it? Let me just find, find it. Find it. I'm finding it. <laughs> Sorry, pal. Can we, have, can we have a couple of eels for the table, please? Yes, yeah, certainly. I'll bring them on over to you, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mates. Can I have a couple of eels for the table? Absolutely. Sure thing. Weird bunch. Um, eventually three more mugs of ale are brought over to you. Uh, that's one silver eight copper. Thanks, Ziggy. Thank you very much. Oh. oh. <laughs> you got it? No, 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 I have to thank. Oh. Oh! Here. <laughs> Casey, Fletcher. you're so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so Casey! So like, um... <laughs> So... Oh, was it one silver eight copper? Yes. Thank you. What? Well, some of the iron guards... Iron guards, what are they called? Iron guards think that I've got uh, Hellas's illegitimate child. <laughs> Why? Well, we did very, very well. Um, it, it was uh... not my idea. Really? <laughs> He's been vanished. I'm actually quite right. What do you mean? To the ever frost expanse. <laughs> do I know what that is? Uh, make we'll me a history say. check. We'll say. I mean, okay. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Natural fucking twenty. Yes. 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 <laughs> Why on this? As <laughs> someone knows stupid trivia. As <laughs> hey, she's clever. Every, she every read, time she you... read books. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. As someone who hails from the border of Belladrin and Esheim, you are somewhat familiar with the more. Um, snowy parts of Galmoria and you know that off to the north behind the limestone bastion mountain range you will find the sprawling wastes of the everfrost expanse an extremely dangerous frigid and almost uninhabitable expanse of um Tigers and um, T A I G A tigers, as in wintry forest and that sort of stuff. Not um, <laughs> as you as you know, all tigers make. Um, uh, um, so, uh, one more time. Uh, tigers, um, Arctic wastelands, ice shelves, that sort of stuff. Okay. It is not a nice place to have gone. He's been banished to the Everfrost Expanse. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's real bad. I know. Well, yeah. That is bad. That's like well, real I'm bad. Bad for him, sure, but good for us because he's not going to be looking for that. No. And they felt sorry for me and my child. Why did it come to that? Well, well, you know what it's like in the moment. Sometimes you just get inspired by what's happening. I mean, fair. They weren't really giving us anything, and Nakani kind of just like went with it, and I went with it, and before you know it, we're all lying through well, our teeth. I mean, I just hope that they don't come after you now for being associated with him or something. Well, she like... told me not to tell anyone. They told me that. They were very sympathetic. Mm, he's an outcast now. I don't think we need to worry about him. Because right. they also told us information that they shouldn't have told us, so we're in cahoots. Okay. Great. But yeah. then we went to that apothecary that you visited before. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ta tanker and tink, tink and tank? We What's figured it out. Tink, tinker, <laughs> tink. I remember. Tinctures and trinkets. And yeah, and trinkets. <laughs> we figured that if, if anyone was going to know about the silence beyond death stuff, yeah, it him. would be an, apo an apothecary or... Turns out he deals in a lot of illicit substances. 
Oh, okay. Chris. And so he may be... Sorry, did he present as male? I assume. Say again, sorry. Did he present as male? Am I using the right Yes, word? yes, yes. yes. Um, so he told us that potentially we might be able to find someone who knows a little bit more about it in the Black Bottom, a different inn. Was that the place that we were going to stay in the other night? That was one Ooh. of the places, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, where Maki gave a ladle to the bar. Or oh. Nakani did. Imagine if he gave a ladle to the to the assassin. <laughs> you could, like, scoop out silence with death. Oh, you can locate <laughs> the ladle. Or after death, or whatever locate it's called. The ladle. You get silence. And you get furthermore, silence. furthermore, <laughs> okay. he also mentioned that a couple of weeks ago, around the time that Lady Bufana was killed, mm -hmm. a couple of people came into his shop looking for strange ingredients. Possibly the ingredients that feature in creating the silence beyond death. It's worth it. And then uh -huh. I asked if they had any sort of like truth serum ingredients. And he um he like went down he went down a hatch. He like pulled the rug off, hmm? went down a hatch, Whoa. and he got like this secret little um box out, unlocked it, and was like looking for things and could not find it, but then mm -hmm. gave us the ingredients for Matthew to make uh, a, uh, truth a, a truth serum. Oh, nice. Sure. And then I winked at him and he smiled. He's kind of cute. Yep. Mm. Okay. And that's when we came here. <laughs> Great. Hi. We have a read. It was really fun. It was I'm fun. glad you had fun. Matthew's not back yet, so I hope he's all right. Um, I've been here for like a uh, couple an hour. of hours. Yeah, an hour. That's mm -hmm. nice. Uh, was was that to be expected? We expected Matthew. You did not know when Matthew was going to be home. Well, perhaps we sit here, we drink, and we wait for him. Drink okay. myself into a stupor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I like your attitude. Uh, <laughs> Barkeep, can we have a couple more, please? Absolutely. Coming on up. Thank you, Four Barry. rounds of drinks. Two silver, four copper, please. Boop. Wonderful. Another round of drinks are set before you. What would you like to do whilst you wait for Moth? Are you just going to sit and sip? Or are you going to exchange stories? Or? Uh, I might sit and chat. I might at some point go and have a, a bath. Mm, absolutely, you can do so. Imagine you that. order for some hot water some to be brought point, yeah. up to the um, water closet and Casey acquiesces and says it'll be along in a moment. Awesome. And then I'll wait for it to be along. Yeah, fantastic. After a couple of moments, you get a knock on the water closet door and you are um, handed uh, this really large jug of water, uh, steaming hot water. Pour it in. You've got yourself a lovely hot bath. All right, and then I'll go to my room and I'll uh, I'll strip down to just the little brown undershirt that she mm -hmm. has on and the little shorts and take my boots off and, go, and then just go into the water closet. Lovely. And have myself a nice little bath. You have a fantastic bath. The heat of the water sort of permeates all of your muscles and you can feel every fiber just relaxing. And there's a moment where you start drifting off ever so slightly. No. <laughs> just no. <laughs> having this sense of calm. Mm, nice. Whilst Willow is bathing, is there anything else anybody would like to do? Who wants to play a drinking game? Yes. Hmm? Uh. <laughs> <Come> <laughs> on. It'll be fun. Sure. I'm Just... going to go to bed soon though. I'm tired. It's been a okay. long day. But before you do... Just trying to think of all the drinking games in my head. <laughs> and he's going to pull out... He'll pull out a cup of peace. Um, the premise of the game. If I manage to get this copper piece to bounce from the table into your cup, I get to ask you one question and you cannot lie. Agreed? Mm-hmm. Just while this is happening, can I just do I get a, any vibe from Tony? Like, <laughs> is this tiredness like actual Inside tired, check. or uh, is it like apathy. I don't want to talk about yeah. it? Tired. Um, Takes make me an potion check. out of bag. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh damn! Oh damn! Sorry, I ruined all of your roles. It's yeah, funny because I actually don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> she don't know what the fuck That's it is. Yeah, don't could just be like you sweetness. Gaslight us. <laughs> It's artificial sweetener. Uh, 24. 24. Are you trying to hide your reactions at all as Tony? No, I think she's genuinely tired. <laughs> Fair. Cool. But she, you probably also get the hint that she doesn't really want to talk about things. 
Okay. Fair. Dink. <laughs> Make sure. me an attack roll with with you. for you it will be proficiency mm-hmm. because you are a tavern brawler. Yes. Uh, it will be dexterity, not strength. Okay. So I can add my proficiency to this. Yes. Proficiency, dex, and okay. D twenty roll. So I'm a, so it's plus four. All right. Pink. Fuck. Six. <laughs> Six. <laughs> it pink. <laughs> Doesn't even meet the rim of the glass. It just bounces straight off. Okay. I don't really know. Oh, okay. D20, dex, no proficiency. No, I just rolled that one. <laughs> 19. 19. Whose cup are you aiming for? Siggy's, I guess. Ah! <laughs> I don't have a question to ask. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna finish the ale and then mm-hmm. like catch the coin. Nice. Nice one. So you can't lie. I cannot lie. I am an open book. Okay. What's the last thing that you remember from the night? I assume you were referring to the night in question. Yeah. The incident. Hmm. I'm not sure. Can't lie. I can't lie, but I'm not sure that is for polite conversation. I cast Zone of Truth. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Well, it's fuzzy, but. And I was very drunk. But there was, there was someone over here. There was someone back there. And there was someone kind of around here. And we were all having a merry old... Very tacitly put, Dewey. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that's the last thing you remember. That's the last thing I remember. Well, so the next thing you know, they were dead. What's the next? That's another question, my friend. You'll have to get the coin and the cup for that. Mm. All right. Okay. Do I believe him? To you. Can I answer him? He said he's telling the truth. Yeah, but do I? I don't know if I believe that. All right. I cast zone of truth. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Carry on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Oh end. bloody hell! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> but like. God is taking it seriously. <laughs> Backs up like Oof. 10 feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh. Good job. Gosh. <laughs> I'm super dexterous, guys. <laughs> six. With a, with another six. <laughs> it tunk, just bounces off a little knot in the wood and... Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to retrieve it. Mm-hmm. Give it... Oh, okay. Tony, you. you're up. Oh, again? Oh, my God. I don't have any good questions in my brain. <laughs> <sighs> I've got to throw it, so I'll throw it in the carnage. Just... Dex. Dex roll, please. Uh, ten. Uh, a ten is just enough. Um, <gasps> you, it's a it's cup. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to ask. It. Oh, okay. Okay. Two. I'm really good at this game. <laughs> um, how did you meet Morphe? In the Blightlands. Uh, I um, found myself there and uh, I don't know how exactly. Uh, I, I woke up and, and my staff was damaged and there were creatures and mm, he saved me and we've been traveling ever since wow you don't remember anything before that oh i do oh but that's another you just don't know how you got there (laughs) (laughs) hey i'm interested as a person (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna tip the cup, the, the coin. coin, and name it Ziggy. Oh, pink. 
Wonderful. Ooh. Oh, I've gotten another ale, I think. Yeah, for sure. Another six copper. Uh, 14. Success. This is great. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> it's hard, isn't right. it? I'm going to um, go over to the bar and get another ale. Yeah, you do so. No. That's absolutely <laughs> fine. You're time. having a grand old time over there. I tell you what, <laughs> listen. I'm having a great time, Bob. Thank you very much. Good, good. good. <laughs> listen, for yourself as well. Are you sure, my friend? Absolutely. That's very kind of you. Another six copper would take those off. Beautiful. I will absolutely join you there. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. And he's got... What does we say in his time? I mean, Wales. <laughs> <laughs> Skull. Skull. I've not heard of that one. Skull. Yeah. Do you down it or... No, no, no. That's you just... take a sip. He starts drinking, but like looks to see if you're drinking as well. <laughs> just, just go. Thank you very much. I, I'll open a tab for you. You just keep ordering drinks. I'll get you to settle it. Good Either idea. tonight or tomorrow morning when you got a clear ahead. Is that right? Perfect. Wonderful. You go back to your friends. Just shout me if you need me. I'll bring over. You just want standard ale? Yeah. Flag me if you want anything stronger. But for now, ale it is. Thank you very much. And he opens a tab for you. Um, yeah. Uh, if you could have one wish... Wow. Wow. Well, that's uh, a very big question. Um, there are many things that I regret in this life, and many things I, I don't regret. If my tribe has taught me anything, it's not to look back with disappointment. Because even the dark times helped build you into the person you were meant to be. But I guess if I had one wish, I would wish that perhaps maybe I hadn't had that last jug of mead at that party. Hmm. And perhaps I could have been a little more level-headed in making decisions. Perhaps I wouldn't be in this situation. However, on the other hand, that would mean that I hadn't met your fine selves. And so, why bother wishing for anything? Things happen for a reason. Ancestors will. Inspiration. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Oh, is, is, is Willow back yet? Uh, no. Still in the bar? One this more will, time. this will. Have. I yeah. fucking knew it. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> With more. your final One. throw, Sigismund. Okay, come on. Batter up. This one's pretty carny. Hey, batter, 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 swing, batter. Got it, got it, got it. Ooh, that's not right. What is it? Uh, Dex. Dex, and for you, proficiency. Uh, just gotta be a ten. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Twelve. Which one? Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> yeah, twelve. A twelve is a success. It barely hits the glass rim and sort of like skitters into the drink, but you just manage to see it sinking down. What is your home like? It's beautiful. We have lots of gardens, and my monastery was on the top of a waterfall that falls into nothing, just goes on forever, or at least that's how it always looked to me. We have lots of Some people say, would say, it looks untidy. We don't have money like you um, have. Hold up the phone. It, 
Mohan had to explain to me how it works. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no... You don't need it. You can't use it. You can't eat it. It's not... Not unless you try very hard. You're not here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like she did that. <laughs> the voices. Where is he? Uh, Casey's working his powers again as the more keep barking <laughs> just to insert him there for a moment. Um, we... We use things, and then when you are not using it, you put it down for someone else to use. Why would you keep something just for yourself? Mm. That's beautiful. If someone needs something, you, and you have it, you give it. And I much prefer it to how things work out here. Mm. But we have big families. Um, the streets are paved with white stone and lots of colorful flowers. Um, people have uh, uh, prayer flags that flicker between the streets. And there is always music from somewhere. And I would have been happy had things never left. Mm. But I, I think there is beauty here too. I should like very much to visit Anji. Maybe. One day. Perhaps. Inspiration, Charlotte. So beautiful! Mm. Shut up. Casey brings you over another. You talk. Do you talk more about the places you have been? The places you are from? Or do you talk about other things? I think at that point, Tony would be like, um, I'm going to go get some sleep now, if that's all right. Of course. Uh, Moth isn't back yet. Moth is not back. We uh, will await Moth. If something goes wrong and he doesn't come back, you need us to just come get us. She's gonna walk upstairs and go into Willow and Tony's room, mm -hmm. so not the other room. I see Willow's clothes and things on the floor mm -hmm. now. On the floor, folded on the floor, up on the folded bed. up on the bed. <laughs> Messy uh, fuck. The only thing, yeah, she, yeah, she would have taken everything off: bar, shirt, shorts, and and yeah, her outside clothes. Okay. Uh, now Tony knows mm -hmm. that Willow has these two. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna go in her bag <laughs> and get them. <laughs> you do so. Tony multi levels into room. I will say that Tony has enough time to go through your things and acquire them. If they are not on your person, she takes five minutes <laughs> to rifle through Willow's belongings. Respectfully. Respect. <laughs> And you find <laughs> a small Dog. leather uh, sort of what looks to be like a wallet of some description yep. tied with a little bit of leather twine. Okay. You undo it and it opens out. And in each of many individual pockets, you can see metal um, tools used for cool. picking locks. She's going to find it uh, and close them and wrap it up and put it in her bag and just be like, just for now, I'll give them back, I promise. Even if she's not there, but she'll say it. Mm -hmm. You say it to the air, and yep. the silence is the only thing that greets you back. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> uh, cool. Then I guess uh, she'll, well, she'll, well, 
She'll just get in bed, but not to sleep. Mm-hmm. Does she sleep? I think she does. She's tired. She'd meditate before she went to sleep, then, mm-hmm. and then she'd go to sleep. Fantastic. And you're sleeping in the room of you and Willow. Well, me and Willow, yeah. Not a problem at all. Have you returned the key at some point to Casey for your other room, or have you kept that for now? I would have kept it for now. That's absolutely fine. Sleep very quickly finds your mind. Yep. And you drift off into the realms of the subconscious. Cool. Willow, by the time you make it back to your room, Tony is sound asleep. Okay. Um, I'll uh, just shove on the grooming leather. Mm-hmm. Just because it's good to have my leather on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll put little socks on and my dress mm-hmm. and skirt. And I'll just run downstairs to see if Mothy was not returned, but you can see Nakani and Sigismund talking whilst you've been in the bathroom and Tony's been upstairs. They have been regaling each other with tales of their homelands. Um, Nakani tells uh, Sigismund of the Hachiyue cliffs, massive cliffs with the most gorgeous giant trees that hang straight out of the cliff face. I and the don't want to ask this, but how do you spell it? Hachiyue. Uye, uh, Ue, <laughs> sorry, is H A C H I dash U Y E. U Y E. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the bonsai masters of Anajau replicate these tree forms in their work, and you return with telling um, Nakani of the most sacred place in Esheim, the cradle of the messenger, uh, this beautiful sort of almost half-curved mountain range that uh, protects uh, a small portion of the land within Esheim, and it is said to be one of the most sacred places to Hilana, the earth Mother, or messenger in um, Esheim. And then Nakani comes back by telling you of the um, levitating peaks of the Celestia Mountains. And this is when you, Willow, come on in and you can just see them just back and forth with excitement and wonder in their eyes at these fantastical places from their homeland. Wow, we are really good at exposition. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite welcome as he places another <laughs> rail down and goes back to the bar. Oh, yeah. I think he's so had at least yet. six. Huh? Are you not back yet? Nope, not yet. Okay. I was going to give it another maybe half an hour and then go and see if there was any sound outside, if I could see if they were still okay. going. Right. I'll stay up all night if I have to. I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> He's just clinking away on his own. Uh-huh. Give me a performance check at disadvantage. You're pretty steamy right now. Steamy? Steamed. Oh, and steamy. He's steamy. He's steamy. He's going to go back to the trinkets and... Yeah. Tinctures. There you go. Five. Five. <laughs> it's <laughs> appallingly bad. Oh my god, stop! <laughs> not there, you're asleep. You're asleep. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. Is, is there like oh, a, a mead left or something? Uh, there's like a half mug of mead in front one. of Siggy for sure. I'll just take that one then. <laughs> yep, you do so. How, Casey how sees your... this and brings you over another one. There you go. Oh, it was lovely. It was great. It was nice. It was warm. It was comforting. It felt like a massage. It was nice. Did you guys have fun? Tony seem okay? We had a great time. We yeah. played the game. We shared stories. I shared stories. It was lovely. It's been brilliant. I think Tony seems very tired from having walked all day. Yeah, maybe. She's, she's very internal, so a lot, a lot happens on the inside, I think. She seem okay to you? Um. Yeah. She seems a little more guarded today than usual. She's holding something back. I think. I, I don't. I don't think she's holding something back. I think maybe she's just. Why? What makes you say that? I, I say it from a place of concern. But I do think she might be hiding something from us. Maybe from from you. From me. Too. She's only just met you. She wouldn't hide it from from me. We tell each other everything. I, to be fair, I don't know you guys very well yet. Yet. Thank 
We will. So you clearly know her better than I do. Yeah. I know her a lot better than you. Also, when people are very close to you, sometimes those are the most difficult people to talk to you about things. Because you feel like you might be disappointed in me or... I just think it might. I don't think so. I just. I. She would. She would tell me. She. She tells me everything. I think. I'm sorry. We've only only met her for a week. I've known I, her for I'm, a year and a half. She would. She would tell me everything. That's good. That's very good. I'm glad you have found someone like her. I'm very grateful. I need her. Your friendship I think is beautiful. And I think she needs you too. How did you meet her? <laughs> well, she saved me actually from some guys. Um, some people that I did. Uh, well, I tried to, I was by myself. And I uh, tried to do uh, like a, uh, similar to this, like an adventuring thing. They needed help getting something from somewhere, um, so I signed up to be with them, and uh, they, uh, the way they went about it, I didn't like, so I just left, and then they came and confronted me, and, and Tony came and stopped them, and then we ran away. It was an accident. Yeah, they, they were, they were, she likes to call them pricks. Yeah. Pricks is also good. Yeah, but, uh, and then we just, we, um, we have a, a mutual, uh, my dad is a follower of Haverin. So oh. we connected on that front, and and then we just kind of st- stuck with each other, really, for a while. You know, in my culture, we have a word for people like like you and Tony. We call each other Drenga. 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 It's a bond between shield brothers and shield sisters that is. <laughs> Deeper than siblings, closer than parents. It runs deep, and it's clad in iron and steel. I think you and Tony are Drenga. Drenga. I definitely need her. You need to meet my Drenga. You have a Drenga? I have five. <laughs> <laughs> Idun, Sola. The other guys. Ninjal. <laughs> <laughs> Ninjal. He's a good one. Grun, Grunhill. You would love Grunhill. Idun. Strange one. Beautiful. Sola. Uptight. But. Steel fisted. And they can all drink me under the table. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would enjoy their company. I'm sure I will. Maybe after a couple of days. <laughs> Matthew definitely would. <laughs> Speaking of Matthew, how long do you remain up for him? I'm going to wait up until he's. You're going to wait all night? Does Willow uh, yeah. and Nakani? I, I'm going to set out and just go to the, the district and the house and just yes absolutely how are you getting into the gill district up and over a wall <laughs> up and over a wall come on okay you've been in this city long enough to know that that is technically illegal so you are gonna have to stealth this That's... so firstly give me a stealth check do we i mean i presume we know notice if Nic- I, I will tell you where I'm going. Yes. No, I was going to say, it depends on if Nakani is disclosing that information, but yes. Nakani tells you to wait here in case Mothi comes back, but she declares that she is going to try and find him. That was a 19. 19. You stealth through the now shadowy streets of the loggers district heading over towards the guild district 
and it's two streets out where you ascertain this would probably be a be, be best to run over the rooftops and into the guild district you very easily using beams and ledges climb without a single instance of do I assassin's creed it oh absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> from pillar to post grabbing onto ledges and with feats of extreme dexterity and athleticism you manage to get your way across onto the first of the rooftops mm -hmm. you spring onto another one what's your passive perception 15 with a 15 you notice torchlight from down the street fast approaching you you look down and you can see that there are two iron guard running towards you what are you doing i'm gonna hide behind any kind of chimney pot or anything like that okay i want you to make me a stealth check at disadvantage Son of a gun. oh actually actually <laughs> here we go actually go for I it i killed them <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I, I turn them out. into animals. <laughs> I skin them alive. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what are you doing, Akani? Um, I'm going to um, she's going to just kneel down and very uh, 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 subtly, she's going to like drag her hand across the roof tiles, mm -hmm. pull up a thread, mm -hmm. hold it between one finger, aim it. Mm -hmm snap it down and she's going to cast blink on herself and Woo! teleport oh. incredible are you teleporting back into the guild district so you're continuing on your travels yes. amazing um so you cast blink on yourself which means uh roll me a d20 on an 11 or higher you blink okay come on, Ooh, come on. Natural, 20! natural 20 you feel that thread taut in your hands though made of nothing but ethereal nothingness snap back down and in an instant woof, and you feel that shift between realms as you are pulled into the ethereal plane you now have your entire movement which you i'm assuming run step of the wind you leap over and then you feel the pull back to the material plane as 10 feet in front of you you woof, and you are two streets down Give me one yep. more stealth check. Oh. Monk shit. Just straight roll? Straight roll don't still. Don't drink it. <laughs> that tis not on the board. Yeah, that that was a I think I mean it's, it's not it's in the tray. Land. They're not rolling in trays, so my rule oh. of in the tray. It, that is an eight. An eight. Oh no. Very good. Oh. Blink again? <laughs> Time to start murdering again. <laughs> <laughs> you pad your way across the rooftops of some of these inner buildings, but as you go, a loose tile sh oh, no. sh shatters no. on the ground below, slipping from where it has been secured, and you see down a street torchlight is starting to move towards you uh what are you doing uh how close am i to the house where i need to be to uh at this point you are not too far away it's going to take you another 10 minutes of stealthing however okay uh i'm gonna i'm gonna cast blink again cast blink again okay fantastic Aim again pull it from like an elastic and like uh with that elastic snap once again roll me a d20 to see if you blink 18. 18. Yeah. Once again, your form just disappears and you use this opportunity to leap across to an adjacent street, go two down that way and take a long loop around and you use the duration of the blink to get you where you need to be. And with that, you alight down onto the street in front of Arcanist Ofuixka's house. You can see in the top this circular light and ever so occasionally there are just flashes of red. Can I... Does it seem quiet around here? Seems fairly quiet around here, Any yes. Any torchlight at all? Uh, no torchlight, no. There is, like, 
light spilling from a couple of windows that are uh, not shuttered. So there is occasionally some light that spills onto the street floors. I am just going to chill out here. Okay. Not do anything that's going to attract attention. Okay. Just try and melt into the shadow. Make me a stealth check again. Final one. 19. 19 is very good. And you remain undisturbed for another two and a half hours. What? Moth, you got out very late. And you see the door to the Arcanist's house open. And there, standing before you, is the familiar form of your lepidoptilid friend, Mothew. I suppose you hear the tail end of my mother saying that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> As he steps outside and... Ooh, full circle. And I'm gonna <laughs> full on extra Assassin's Creed dive off. Do I notice it? Oh, uh, watch your passive perception. Land. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> you <sighs> make me an acrobatics check just to see how well you do. Come on, easy. <laughs> uh, 20, Woo! 20 something. 20. You. Oops. 20 something is more than enough. Six. That's all I need. 26. Yeah. You three point landing down you with your yeah. Hanuman staff behind you. You have the drop on him. He just starts to lift off his ear. Uh, I'm going to go and uh, uh, literally monkey climb onto his back. And Lovely. Go, you were ages. I was so worried. By the moon! <laughs> 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 You go to swing around just as you see this flash of blue skin, the two nostril pits in the face, and the big, wide, long canine smile of Nakani as she is trying to scare you. <sighs> Nakani! You scared the fur off me! Excuse me, could you keep it down out there, please? Some of us are trying to sleep. Where's this? Uh, it's coming from uh, off to your right down the street that you were heading. You're not sure where from. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, um, I'm going to light my sensor as mm-hmm. bright as I can. Sorry about that. I'll be sure to keep it down next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And you hear the <laughs> of windows. What are you doing here, Nakani? I said don't come. Well, uh, what if you'd been kidnapped? Or, or taken prisoner. I just wanted to make sure that I was... You were literally just in time. I was going to give it another ten minutes and I was going to not kick the door down, but do break a window. Nakani, I'm <laughs> fine. <laughs> you can't... I know you worry, but I can take care of myself. I did so a long time before I saw you. When have I ever said that you couldn't take care of yourself? <laughs> I suppose you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't move the point. You're going to put yourself in danger coming here. <gasps> I, 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 used, I used the threats and I, I snuck around. The, they were coming, the Iron Guard, and... and Wait, what? I, 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 can, I can teleport. Say the part about the iron, the iron guard again. <laughs> oh, oh, they're no. just, I don't, I don't think they like people sneaking around the city very much without a, a paperwork. Have you ever seen them? No. Have you made it all the way here? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Today, uh, uh, we 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 went to um, we went to the the, the, the barracks. With, I know she's gonna launch yeah. into full on seven year old. Like, Love it. And then, we yeah. <laughs> oh, and then, and then, <laughs> amazing, and then we absolutely thing, incredible. And then sticky to the thing, and then Antonia's be, being very quiet, and I think she's a bit sad, but it's fine. She's she's gone to bed early, and the, 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 I love it. Fantastic. Just before we go, uh, Matthew's gonna be. And he's going to fly over to the lamp closest to the, the <laughs> And he's going to put one of a bundle in as it blows as bright as possible. And he's going to fly away. <laughs> you <laughs> asshole. 
You just light one of these, like, not flashbang type bundles, but like phos- magnesium. Yeah, like phosphorescent wow. sort of things. It just into this bright light that floods this entire street and you take this opportunity to <laughs> off with Nakani in tow. You can resist looking away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like there this? is a moment when Nakani has to go, <laughs> no, Matthew, and grab his head and just keep it. <laughs> it's just a point. He lights it. He goes, <laughs> it's just like slow motion. No. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible, and I think that is the perfect opportunity to close this chapter of our story here. Believe you me, I could go on like this forever. Note it down for next time because we will pick up when Matthew and Akani get back to the Stewpot Tavern, uh, where Siggy is still waiting for them. Very much drunk. A massive thank you to everybody for such incredible backstory role play. No one gets a special shout out. You've all blown me away with just how fucking good you are. I love you so you much. Jack, you get a special shout yeah. out. Yeah. Yay. Thank you for some dope <laughs> Dean. Ding. Nice. <laughs> so I'm not as eloquent as you are. Not 20. <laughs> no, I very much appreciate my guy. Thank you so much. And of course, most importantly, thank you to you at home for watching. Join us next episode when the players keep connecting with their new found party members in... Or disconnecting. Oh. <laughs> we'll see how we go. But for now, keep on keeping on adventurers. Peace and love. Good night. Bye. Bye.